Hey, good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, February the 8th, and this is your daily word of encouragement. Uh, so to continue to build off the theme of, uh, of our, the break room from last Wednesday night, we're talking about this, uh, this mentality of instead of trying harder to be a better, to, to work at, you know, being a better Christian, doing the actions or the activities or, you know, fulfilling the checklist to be a better disciple, a better Christian, about learning to try softer, about learning to simply just to abide in Christ and draw closer to the Lord and to allow more of Him to fill more of us so that, uh, that who He is is what, become, is what comes through us. Um, so many times we can easily convince ourselves that, um, that it is through our own effort that we're going to become better because that seems to match up with most everything else we think about in life. If I want to learn a skill, I've got to, I've got to dedicate myself to getting better and better and improving at it. And God has given us these tools, these disciplines through which we can grow, but it's, but it's not because it's so we can achieve something by our own work and effort. It's so that we can learn how to, um, to, to draw closer to him and allow his spirit and uh, his power to be at work in us and through us. And to, to, uh, to really illustrate that, I want to uh, take something that, that Paul wrote about himself uh, in uh, the letter to the Philippian church, the book of Philippians, that really becomes one of the more insightful and introspective things I think Paul ever wrote, where he compares the life that he once had, uh, this man who was as religious and as devout as anybody possibly could have been, but at the same time was so misguided in his understanding about who God was and what God wanted from him. And how everything changed the moment he came to know Jesus. And I think it beautifully illustrates the point we were trying to make this past week. So in the third chapter of Philippians, uh, Paul is, begins kind of sharing part of his story, part of his testimony, and how for years and years and years um, he felt like if there, you know, that, that he had to prove himself to God. And the argument he's making is to again trying to show the Philippians that there's there's no reason to to feel like that that's you know that try to help them understand that it's not about proving yourself to God. If there's any if there's anyone that it could have done that, he's saying, listen, I, I could have done that through all the effort and the work that I was doing. Um, that should have been what drew, drew me closer to God. But if anything, it was draw, pushing me farther away. He says, I myself would have reasons for such. This is Philippians chapter three, beginning in verse four. <clears throat> Uh, I myself could have had reasons for such confidence, such you know, confidence in the self. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I would have more. I was circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. So pause there for a second and just say, you know, Paul's saying, listen, if holiness, if, if righteousness from God could actually be achieved by your own effort, man, there was nobody who was doing better, doing it better than me. Uh, I, I was, I was following the law. I, I was, uh, you know, I was following the leadership of the, of the Pharisees to say we've got to, you know, this this church, this movement to follow this, you know, this this heretic Jesus. We got to quash it. We got to put it down. Um, I was as uh, I was as holy and as devout as you possibly could have been, and yet could not have been farther away from the true heart of God. And this is where he picks up in verse 7. But whatever were gains to me in that world, he says, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, meaning all the, the, the achievements of my old life. I consider them garbage that I might gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and even participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection of the dead. Now, before I hit that last part, make sure we understand clearly what Paul is saying there. He's saying, I want to know Christ. I, you know, it, everything else that I thought mattered in life matters nothing in comparison. In fact, it's rubbish. It's garbage. Um, it's, <clears throat> it's, it's refuse uh, com compared to knowing Jesus and drawing close to him every day. It's not about me working uh, to prove myself to God. It's about recognizing that God has done the work necessary to reconcile me back to him. And so the best life that I can live now is about just drawing closer every day to God and, and being at that full awareness of his presence and, and living him and abiding in his grace. Now, the last part is really the, you know, the idea of this uh, trying softer about recognizing that you know, no matter you know, where we're at in that, on that journey with the Lord, it's about recognizing where we've been, you know, own, owning that past, but not letting that past 
um, weigh us down. About It's about moving forward and continuing to grow forward in faith. So let's look at verses 12 through 14 of that same passage. Uh, not that I've already obtained all this. So Paul says, listen, I haven't arrived. I, I, or, not, not that I've obtained all this or arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So Paul says, I'm in a state of continuing to grow forward, um, to grow with the flow, as we talked about on Wednesday night. Um, another way to think about it is, is I'm in the process of failing forward, that even when I mess up, even when I make mistakes, which I will, even when I fail to live out uh, God's ideals in my life, God's best for me, when that happens, I'm going to, I'm going to recognize it, call it for what it is, and call sin, sin, uh, surrender it to the Lord, and then I'm going to I'm going to move on. I'm going to press on. I'm not going to let the past and the regrets and the guilt of, my, of, of what I've done or who I've been in the past continue to pull me back to that old life. I'm going to agree with God about what it is, and I'm going to com- com- commit that to Him and send to Him and, and, and continue to push forward towards Jesus. And the more I draw closer to Jesus, the less appealing that old sin life looks to me. That's the promise we have. And so today, as we begin this new week, Let's, let's, let's live with that mindset. Of this, the, you know, I'm going to walk with Jesus today. I'm going to be in his presence. I'm going to surround myself with, I'm, I'm going to fill my mind with his thoughts and, and let my heart beat for the things that, that God's heart beats for. And the closer I draw the Lord, uh, it won't feel like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm having to work at it um, because it's going to be my, my natural inclination uh, as my act of, of, of adoration for him and gratitude for all that he's done for me. Let's pray together. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for uh, for who you are and what you've done for us. So Lord, today I pray that um, we would just allow ourselves to be in your presence. Uh, no matter what we do, no matter what uh, we come in contact with today, Lord, I just pray that we would be mindful of you at all times and that um, as we feel your spirit moving in our life, Lord, while it's directing us back towards you, that Lord, we would um, recognize that prompting and, uh, and Lord, that it wouldn't feel so much like effort uh, you know, that... Uh, that it would be more about what Lord what is drawing us, and um, and and simply just being present with you, um, Lord. I just pr- <clears throat> pray that your that your Spirit would speak clearly to us, and that when we hear your Spirit's voice, Lord, we would respond um, promptly and with boldness. And we love you, Jesus, and we thank you for all these things you do for us. We pray this in your name, Amen. God bless everyone.